Can you give a concrete example of a situation that may require emotional intelligence and how to properly utilize that skill? What I learn, what I'm learning in providing emotional intelligence for leadership is that people are naturally uncomfortable with change. Even if the change is for something that's going to make your job and your life more comfortable, you're used to being the way you are and changing the way you are makes you feel uncomfortable because you don't know exactly what's going to occur at the end. And so that one of the things that is important for the leader is to engage the person who he is leading in terms of what's the motivation or what's in it for him or her and elicit their cooperation. And so the simple thing that I can tell you is that I happen to have been involved with healthcare organization when they were introducing electronic uh, medical records. Older physicians were devastated because they didn't understand how to operate a computer even. They were used to writing notes in longhand. And it's really, really true and sad is that many physicians retired early because they could not adapt to the change. My position is, before making the change, it would be good to give as much information as possible to how it's going to occur. Make also clear that each person who needed assistance will be provided that assistance on an individual basis as opposed to a group. There are some things that are more complicated in trying to manage it in a group setting. And for some people, the embarrassment of having others see your lack of competence makes the person feel bad about him or herself. So that's one example that I can give. Even in terms of introducing uh, emotional uh, intelligence, you let the employees know. The best example that I can give you is uh, New York Life, an insurance company out of New York, I guess they were worldwide. Uh, they um, had a group of salesmen and they were selling life insurance. And so they trained them in emotional intelligence. They had a control group with the same number of salespeople. They offered training in sales, the same kind of training that they had been offering for many, many years. Those who had emotional intelligence increased their sales by 73%. And so that now when you're training another group, the first thing that you do is, let me tell you about the success of New York Life. This is me talking to a new group and showing them what the return on investment is, mm -hmm. so that anyone in the organization can respond to that because business is interested in making profits. Well, can I give you one more example, please? Yes. <laughs> I, 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 I saw a physician in Texas, and he was from the Bronx, New York. He was 6'4", and he weighed um, about 280, and orthopedic surgeon, and he talked loud, and he had a Brooklyn accent. So he says to me, Anderson, I don't like these people down here in Texas. And I said, doctor, they don't like you either. <laughs> and so I said, look, you can't change the fact that you are 6'4", or you weigh 280, However, or you can't change your accent. My suggestion is every time you meet with someone who is not as tall as you are, to the extent possible, please sit down. And you can control your volume, speak more softly, and try to do everything you can to make the listener feel at, at ease. And so a year later, he called me and he says, I just want to give you some feedback. The same people who forced me to see you have now made me chief of surgery. Oh. Success. <laughs> and so that emotional intelligence is one of the most uh, exciting uh, disciplines that's come out during my lifetime.